All of the research conducted on UV light has been done with UV light in isolation and not in the context of full spectrum sunlight. So even midsummer, midday sun, only less than 10% UV light, over 50% of that light is red and infrared light. And there's also research in the literature showing that red and infrared light balance out the effects of UV light on the body and help to basically reduce things like DNA damage and inflammation at the level of the skin. So if we know this to be true, why are we studying UV light in isolation when we know that's not the context that anybody is experiencing UV light? Well, what they don't tell you is that, you know, if we look at the risk and the benefit of, of the sun, sun exposure will increase your risk of, of cancers that have less than a 0.3% mortality rate because every decision and choice and behavior that we make has a risk-benefit analysis associated with it. And that's another thing that I really, it gets like on my nerves with regards to like the standard medical model and mainstream science as well is that, you know, they'll say the sun causes skin cancer, stay out of it. Basically, your basal cell and your squamous cell carcinomas can be, there is an increased risk of getting those from being in the sun. Though I would argue that if you're building a healthy solar callus and living your life in a way that's more congruent with nature, that you can also avoid those pretty easily. Um, and then the cancers that you can actually avoid by getting a sufficient sunlight are going to be your colon, your breasts, and your blood cancers, which are account for a very high mortality rate sector of cancer deaths. And that's not even to mention all of the cardiovascular disease and diabetes that can be avoided by getting adequate sun exposure as well. Um, and so we think about it in that context, we look at all the top killers in the United States would be the, I mean, a lot of these are driven by obesity and diabetes. And then we have the cardiovascular disease and the cancer mortalities. Autoimmunity is not necessarily a top killer, but it's also a major burden on our healthcare system. And all of these conditions are prevented or remediated by getting sufficient sun exposure. Yeah, that's super profound. And I think, honestly, it's not such a stretch for people to understand once they sort of remove the dogma and noise that they've grown up with. Going back to sort of some of your root um, studies in, in biology with, with metabolism, um, maybe we could just briefly, briefly touch on just how important sunlight is for metabolism. We had Sarah Kleiner on to talk about leptin as, as a very important, you know, uh, light sensitive hormone, but it really affects everything, including the microbiome, which we haven't talked a lot about here on the show specifically. Yeah, yeah, I, I would love to talk about that because I mean, I, it was really a first full circle moment for me when I learned about the gut skin axis and the way that sunlight can directly and indirectly modulate the gut microbiome. And it really also resonated with me because I think we see, you know, studies and stories about, uh, for example, Jeff Leach's work showing that if you're giving these indigenous peoples who live a very like wild and outdoor lifestyle, some of our processed foods and you see this like inflexibility of their microbiome or robustness of their microbiome to these different food inputs that we associate with poor gut health and poor microbiome health and dysbiosis. Um, we see that resilience of their microbiomes, and it just points to the notion that there's so many factors that influence microbiome composition outside of the foods that we eat. And the reason that food has emerged as this totally important feature for micro microbiome sculpting in the modern environment is because we've totally removed ourselves from nature. So if we're actually living a more outdoor, natural, ancestral lifestyle, we're going to be encountering obviously sun from our environment and that sun can activate a gut skin axis via the UVB light and sun that can directly increase uh, gut microbiome diversity. And, and essentially that's a, a really good marker for the health of the microbiome. You can think of it as akin to like monocrop agriculture versus wild crafting or like plants growing in the wild. When we have a monocropped gut where we have very poor gut diversity, microbiome diversity, that leaves us more vulnerable to infections and issues with dysbiosis and overall um, gut function as well, because those microbes, um, they don't have the support of other members of the colonies and uh, of the environment to help create some level of balance in the system, which is also what you would encounter with plants growing in nature. They're much more robust. They're less um, susceptible to getting infections. And that's why we have to spray the crap out of all of our monocrops because they're all really vulnerable. They're not meant to be grown in that just like giant cluster of single plants. We need all of the interactions with the mycelium from the fungi and the bacteria and the protozoa and all the different plants are coming together to form an ecosystem and the gut is the same way. So when we get that UVB light on our skin, of course we're making vitamin D, we're also making about a dozen other vitamin D-like molecules. We're also engaging the POMC cascade and all the benefits that come from that. But we're also reshaping the microbiome to be more diverse. 
So that's one thing. Outside of that, just being outside in nature, you're exposed to a plethora of different types of microbes. You're exposed to different viruses, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and those exposures help to seed the body, the gut, the skin, all of the microbiomes within the body with different varieties of microbes that basically have the potential to even join your your body's ecosystem. If we're living in an indoor environment that's like semi-sterile, our exposures are very limited. And so it makes a lot of sense that we're going to get issues with things like um, antibiotic resistant bacteria and things like C. difficile and different infections that people will get and different exposures that people will get salmonella just from being outside of a natural ecosystem that's going to make their body more robust to infection. Um, and so the way I think about the microbiome now is really this culmination of environment that includes diet, but diet is only one slice of that picture. But really the exposures we're getting through nature, as well as the impact of the sun hitting the skin and modulating that gut skin axis is really what's shaping the microbiome at a fundamental level. And when we remove ourselves from natural environments, we remove ourselves from sun exposure. Now diet is the only piece of that puzzle left to actually shape the microbiome. And that's why it's emerged as this important player, but really there's these other influences that are just as, if not more important. How much do you think it matters to get sun directly on like your stomach and your gut to repair the health of the microbiota there locally? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. It's also something that I really want to study in my lab. Um, we know that there's going to be effects that are like let's say distal to getting direct sun on your abdomen. So just for example, you can activate the gut skin axis by getting any of your skin exposed to that sunlight. But having said that, getting direct exposure to sunlight, you're also getting the direct benefits of the red and infrared light from the sun penetrating into your body and directly stimulating mitochondria and your gut. And we also know that like based on the endosymbiont theory, which basically states that bacteria are the, the the critters that emerge to basically create mitochondria, like mitochondria are rooted in bacterial origin, that we might also not find it hard to believe that that sunlight can also directly modulate and support bacteria in the gut as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if we're getting both a direct benefit of that red and infrared light penetrating into the gut and the body, supporting blood flow, mitochondrial function, anti-inflammation, and also getting some of those indirect effects via the UVB gut skin axis that's activating Palm C and the resulting cascades. We know that um, like the endorphins that are produced from that, that Palm C cleavage, as well as the MSHs um, are modulating the immune system um, directly. And that modulation of immune system is probably also going to influence the microbiome because we know there's this dance between the microbe communities that live in the, in and on the body and the immune system. They're, they're constantly communicating with each other. And so, at some level, there's going to be a level of immune tolerance that's built saying, okay, these microbes are healthy and safe. We don't want to fight those versus these other microbes. You know, they might not be such good guys. We need to kind of tamp down their populations, et cetera. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if that immune modulation effect of the UVB light is also playing a positive role in shaping a healthy and diverse microbiome.